Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eclectic Knitter Podcast. Um, my name is Raylene, aka Kamana Knits on Revelry. Um, you can find episodes on iTunes, on YouTube, and show notes are at the website at theeclecticknitter.com. I am going to clean my glasses because there will be glare, and it would be nice if it wasn't smudgy glare, so... Um, we are doing the whole janky kind of uh, laptop is on my lap, um, so I'm sorry if it moves like it is right now as I adjust. Um, I don't necessarily have a whole lot of time this afternoon to record, but I figured it was better to get something out. I'm a little bit late, um, so I figured it was better to do it like this and get an episode out rather than not do anything at all. So here we are. Um, there will be finished objects, whips. Um, I want to talk about a book and um, I got an order of Fat Squirrel Fiber bags that I want to talk about and um, I was in Vancouver this weekend, which is why I'm recording a little bit late. I just got back really late last night. Um, so I may talk about that as well. So, um, finish objects. I have to reach, apparently. I'm sorry. Um, the first thing I finished was my vanilla socks with a fish lips kiss heel out of Gail's art. Um, sock blank in the Rockstar rainbow colorway. This is on her glitter base, so this is the second sock. I barely, I, I barely, like, barely got into the actual blue on this one. Um, and this was the first sock, which didn't have any yellow. So this one has a lot more blue and two areas of green, and this one has the, the yellow. This one's a lot more speckly, which is fine. Um, these are going to end up going to my mom. They don't quite fit me, which is okay, too. My mom's going to get, like, three pairs of socks. She hasn't gotten any for, like, over a year, so I'm okay with that. I'm sure she's okay with that, too. The funny thing is, is that they're all going to be sparkly. Go figure. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind the warbly-ness. These have not been washed or blocked. Um... I don't mind the warbliness that comes from knitting sock blanks. Really does not bother me. Um, but yeah, they turned out really nice. I'm really happy with them. The second thing I finished is a pair of skews. These are going to be really hard to show. They don't fit me either. Um, this is out of Nomadic Yarns. Spark Sock in the Sugared Plums colorway. It was a Christmas colorway. You can see the funky heel. Maybe if I... I don't usually do toe-up socks, so... But they are way, way, way too tight for me. Um... Which I kind of expected, considering they are a, uh, they're, you knit them on 72 stitches, but because they're on the bias, she says it's like knitting a regular 60 inch sock, and I usually have a 64 inch sock that's then a little bit too, um, a little bit too small sometimes, depending on how tight my gauge is. So... I started these as part of the Stock and It Zombie um, skew knit along that they're doing, but they're breaking it up quite a bit, and I wanted to get my needles free. So I just did both. <laughs> Whatever. They're for my mom. They'll go to my mom as well. She has slightly smaller feet. So those are done. And then, while I was in Vancouver this weekend, I, I'm calling these finished. They, one still needs a heel, and one needs a heel kitchenered. Um, this is out of Nomadic Yarns, um, Brit Sock in the Sassanac colorway. 
here is, I actually have the tag for this, so that is her, and then here, you can see, so it's BFL and 20% nylon, 400 yards. I like the gobstomper balls. I was liter I literally grabbed this the morning on Friday when I left. I had a different um, selection made and then changed my mind. This is what I have left, of course. So I have, this is the one that needs a heel. So the first day, um, by the time I got to Vancouver, I think I was done till about there. And I had an hour and a half layover in Calgary. So I flew out Friday morning at, my flight left at uh, Saskatoon at 10.40. And landed in Calgary around, I think it was 12. My next flight left um, Calgary at 1.30, directly to Vancouver. Got there around 2. This is the second sock. I kitchenered the toe while on the plane last night. My flight last night left Vancouver at 8.30 Pacific Standard. Um, and I got back to Saskatoon at 11.15 or so. Um, so you can see I have a toe. I was working on this earlier today. I just need to kitchener it. Um, but before I got on the plane, I think I was at three repeats, which is about here. So I finished knitting it while waiting at the airport and then on the actual plane and then Kitchener the toe. And I had picked up the stitches for the heel last night while just while the plane was landing um, and did the finish the rest of the heel this morning. So you probably won't see these again. That's why I'm calling them done, even though they still need a heel. This base is really nice. It's soft and it's a little bit fatter than... Um, other sock bases, which I really enjoy. It is a two-ply, but it's not a super tightly spun two-ply. So it's not as rigid. Ridged. Um, and I've ordered a lot of her yarn, and it's practically all in her BFL base, which I really enjoy. So that is finished objects, and that is quite a bit if I do say so myself three pairs of socks not bad um I also made progress on a new project so now we're getting into whips um I started a sweater for my niece it is out of Cascade 220 superwash in lovely colorway 1969 I have four skeins of this I st it looks like a hot mess is what it looks like. Um, this is the beginning of the R&R &R hoodie by Tannis Lovely. It is a plummy purple. It's really you know, getting kind of washed out. There it's there the color's kind of accurate. Um, so you I'm like I've done both of the the pocket outsides. As you can see, and I am knitting up the body, as you can also see, I am knitting the, I think, four to six year size, second largest kid's size, um, for my niece. It's knitting up quite nicely. I am doing this, I believe, on sixes. Yeah, higher, higher sixes. 4.0 millimeter. These are the higher, higher sharps. Because that's my jam, yo. I love Haya Haya Sharps. So it has a mistake rib or something funky at the bottom. It's a ribbing, but it's not really a ribbing. That I did on fives. And I just have these stitches sitting on DPNs because that was easier. And I will need the stitches live for the rest of the pattern, which I will not um, give away. So yeah, this kind of looks weird. Um, but it is coming along, and I have been enjoying it. I haven't knit a whole lot with Cascade, especially not the Superwash. This is my first time knitting with the Superwash, and I always feel like it's kind of thin. Like, I don't always feel like it's a worsted, um, especially since I tend to knit quite a bit with, um, for example, Sweet Georgia Superwash um, worsted or Madeline Tosh Vintage. Um, which are very, and even the Beaver Slide Dry Goods, um, 
two ply worsted weight. Um, they're all on the thicker side of worsted, probably Aaron technically. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to pull out, here's what's left over of my sugared plums. Um, whenever you place an order from, um, ethereal fiber arts, ethereal fibers, you get mini skeins or you get a mini skein. So this is the mini skein that I got um, with an order. And then with the order that was in the mailbox today, I got these two little mini skeins. And they're just, I think they're a two-ply. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. But I have been working off and on on a granny square blanket. And I believe I have talked about this before. Um, but I counted up all my granny squares because I did up a couple. And I have 40, I think. Um, so this I did recently out of Tokyo Underground by Query. It's self-striping. I'm going to do another um, granny square to the space to get a different color striping sequence. Um, this is out of one of those mini skeins from Ethereal Fibers, the one that was wound into a ball. Um, this was out of the Turtle Pearl Girl, um, what does it mean, sparkle sock that I did socks out of. And so was this one. This one was just the gray, and then that was, of course, the rainbowy section. Um, this was out of, I have your boots in my buttocks by Ethereal Fibers. This I did out of the Silver Bells colorway from Nomadic Yarns that I knit the vanilla socks out of for my mom. Um, let's see, how far back? I don't even remember the last time I showed. Um, so this is mostly a sample of, I think it's Yummy 3-ply that I got from Miss Babs. And then I fill, I had to fill in this much um, with, I think it's... Uh, Knitter's Night... No, no, not Knitter's Nightmare. Um, Literally Things Vesper sock with nylon. Um, so that was that. This was um, Vesper sock with nylon. She calls it now her thick sock, I think, because it is a little bit thicker. Um, this was the Socktober Madness colorway, I believe. It was the October Club colorway from 2015. This was the November Club colorway from 2015, friends and family. I have a pair of uh, Jaywalkers, so was this. This is also this October one. Um, and I believe the rest I've shown. But like, this one's out of Rain City Knits for fingering weight. It's a very thin fingering weight, I don't actually like it that much, that base. This is out of Tannis Fiber Arts um, Blue Label Sock um, in her Garnet colorway. This is Madeline Tosh 801010 Fingering in Huchera. This is Madeline Tosh Sock in Mansfield Gardens Party. Mansfield Garden Party. This is Ethereal Fibers. I can't remember the name. I knit a pair of socks out of that. This is an opal. The socks for these went to my mom. This is Finito, a Malabrigo Finito. I think it's an Arco Iris or something. I don't remember. Um, this is Meadowcraft Dye Works, I think, in 4 and 20. I knit a sock head hat out of it. <laughs> like, I have a whole pile yet. Um, so the plan with these, and I don't even have... I don't have an outline for this. Um, I don't have a size in mind. Um, so I don't have a number of granny squares that I'm going for or that I'm aiming for. Right now I'm just crocheting them whenever I can. And I just use a red heart crochet hook that I picked up at Walmart. It is 
uh, US4 is what it says. It doesn't even have a letter on it for like a J hook or whatever. So it's a 3.5 millimeter US4 crochet hook. Cheapy, $2 at Walmart, I believe. $2 Canadian even. Um, so once I'm once I've decided what I want to do, I, I'm going to do another um, border uh, round in a neutral. I haven't decided if that's going to be a gray or a cream or what. Um, and then they will get seamed or somehow crocheted together. I haven't quite sorted that all out yet. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to pull that out because I have been doing some granny squares lately. And like I said, I've gotten some more like I could get another couple granny squares out of this. So far I've just done, for self-striping I usually do two so that I can get all the colors. Um, but for variegateds and stuff, so far I've just been doing one. Um, but that could change because these little mini skeins, um, it's just to sample them and to see the colors and stuff. So there's nothing wrong with doing more than one. Um, I'll do one out of this and I'll do one out of my other nomadic fibers. It's just, it um, doesn't use up very much yarn, really. Like that sample from Miss Babs is the only thing that I've even um, come remotely close to running out on. Um, this is an older fat squirrel fiber bag that I bought a couple years ago. It's a fall bag. It's her medium wedge. That's just where it's living now. I had my uh, fiddlehead mittens in here, but I frogged those because color work really, I've realized it's not my thing. So I just frogged them. I'm going to use the yarn for something else. Um, the other thing that I have cast on is another pair of socks in the Tokyo Underground color. Um, I bought this back when Query was doing her 150 gram skeins of self-striping. So I did a, a pair of socks for me, which still don't have heels, um, a 72 stitch sock for me. And then I just started a 64 stitch sock for my mom. So if I really book it on these, she could have four pairs of socks by the time I see her next at Easter. <laughs> um, and then I also wanted to talk about another blanket project I've had going on because when I was in BC, when I was in Vancouver, I went to Black Sheep Yarns in Port Moody. They carry Madeline Tosh. Um, they also carry Hedgehog Fibers and I bought some, but I didn't bring it over. I'm working on a, I'm trying to find my fade. Um, but they had unicorn tails and some of you may remember that I have a mitered square blanket. I don't like the jagged edge one, so this is a non-jagged edge mitered square blanket. And this is all TML, Tosh Merino Light, which is a single ply fingering weight. Um, I received, most of these are from a uh, mini skein swap that I, out of the Madeline Tosh group that I did like forever ago, like five years ago. Um, and I'm kind of starting to run out of minis for it. So I figured they had unicorn tails and somebody actually started a, a spring swap um, for TML now in the Madeline Tosh group again. So I'm excited about that. So I bought um, Glass Bottom Boat, which is a lot more green than that. And then Celadon. I know these are a little bit bigger really than what I need, but... Um, that's okay. Neon Peach, which is a lot more orange than that. Um, Torchier, which I already actually already had one of those. That's a lot more hot pink than that. And then Mandala, which is again a lot more green than that. But, you know, color accuracy. So, um, I was originally kind of going for all different, um, Colors, but once again, I don't have a set plan on how big this is going to end up. Um, and duplicates are inevitable at some point, which is fine. By the time I get to duplicating any of the colors that are already in here, um, they'll be far enough away that it won't be super obvious. So, um, yeah, I picked that up today and finished this little 
purple block over here. So I'm kind of working on that. Um, that's about it for that. Uh, so Fat Squirrel Fiber had an update after um, after the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. And I bought some sock bags. So I picked up this one. And the inside is really cute. This, this one went to BC with me. And then this one up here is another one that I picked up. And then I picked up a, I think this is a large wedge, but I liked the, the print. The polar bears and the narwhals and stuff. It's very Canadian almost. This one just has a plain lining. And then I pre-ordered her sock plus, which is a little bit taller in this um, National Parks fabric. I think it's also just with the unbleached lining. So yeah, I really like her bags. They're probably my favorite ones of the ones that I have um, because they're a little bit thicker and they stand up nicely on their own. They're not floppy. I don't like floppy bags. Um, for books, I recently read um, Man by Kim Thuy. I don't remember if I've talked about this before. If I have, I'm sorry. Um, it is a very, very good book. Uh, she wrote, this is her second novel. She wrote the book called Rue. Um, she is originally from Vietnam and her family immigrated to, I think they live in Montreal, in Quebec. Uh, and Rue was very different from this. This actually is a, um, it does kind of go back and forth between past and present. It's about a woman who uh, marries a Vietnamese man um, who lives in Toronto. So she immigrates to Toronto to marry him. Um, and she's a cook or a chef at the little restaurant that he owns. And she cooks like Vietnamese food. And every day she does something different. And then she um, ends up having an affair and it talks about that. Um, yeah, it's, it's short. Um, it's very short. It's only 139 pages. Um, but it is in very, very good. If you can pick it up, do so. Um, I believe it's available in paperback. I just prefer hardcover. Um, it's very touching, very different from anything I'm used to just because of her writing style. It is, I believe, originally translated um, from French, so she writes in French, and then it is translated, but it is a very good translation as far as I know. I don't speak French, so maybe it's a crappy translation. Um, I know that a lot of people said that her, the translation of Rue was done really well, and I feel like this is, was translated by the same person. So, yeah, um, I have to go pick up my dog. He's been at the kennel all weekend, his daycare kennel. The daycare that he goes to also does kenneling. Um, so I have to go pick him up, which is why it's been a relatively uneventful <laughs> uh, podcast overall. Um, I'm hoping to get a lot more done in the next two weeks or so. And I look forward to talking to all of you if I ever get the chance uh, on the boards or whatever. Um, so yeah. I hope you are enjoying whatever you are working on and I hope you have a great two weeks or so and I will see you then.